Hello, this is Greg Beamer, or at GB World on Twitter, and today I want to start talking about Visual Studio 2013. In particular, I want to take you through the options box and a few of the options I like to set. What you're looking at right now is the Visual Studio 2013 IDE, or Integrated Development Environment, and the options are under Tools at the very bottom. And what I'm going to do is zoom in right here so you can see this a little bit better. And what we've got right now is the color theme is light. Now, if you have Visual Studio 2013, you'll see all three of these, blue, dark, and light. With Visual Studio 2012, you'll only have light and dark. Um, first, I'm going to show you the blue theme. And if I zoom out here, you'll see that it's not much different from the light, except it's got some uh, highlighting around all of the boxes so you can see them a little bit better. Now, I'll go ahead and set it to the dark theme as well so you can see that. And this completely changes it, and this is really good for uh, low light type situations. Now I'm back on the light theme as I think it's a little easier to see some of the things here, and what I'm going to do is go down to a section called Startup. And as you can see right now, if I zoom in on this, it says product videos. We have a lot of great content to show you, but we need your permission to get it and keep it updated. And this is where you do this, is under the Startup section right here. If you'll click on this little checkbox that says Download Content, and then click OK, you'll see that it starts updating the videos, and so all the videos come in. So I'm going to go back up in, pull the options back up, and you can change the, the timing on this. This can be pretty long, actually, because they don't update the content that often. Now another one here still under Environment is Task List. And under task list, what I tend to do um, is go ahead and add one called add tests. And this is because I work with a lot of people who are very junior and I'm very high on quality. We do a lot of test driven and behavior driven development. So I go ahead and say that this is high and add it in. To illustrate what this just did, let me open up a recent project here. And the project's just a simple math library. And what I've got is a basic math class here, and right now we've written one test when multiplying 5 times 5. We have an expected value of 25, so in the math class, I have it set right now so it only returns 25. Now, we know that this isn't going to work for multiply, so I've added this comment here that says add test, not enough test to fit acceptance criteria. Now, I added one more comment just to show you that this particular other is not tagged, so it's not going to show up. And what I want to do here is I want to go ahead and open up the task list, and I'm going to switch it from user task to comments. And as you can see, this add test shows up. Now if I close out these two classes here, I go to this comment and I say add test, it's going to go directly to the comment. So I can leave these types of comments for my distributed team, and they can go ahead and start looking at them. I'm going to move back over to Options, and I'm going to go in the Projects section here. And under General, I don't like to keep my projects located here as uh, underneath my Documents folder. So what I generally do is I change this to kind of a common location. So C Projects, for example. Now, I don't generally change the Project Template location or the Item Template location because they really don't matter in, in the long run. Now, another one that you might want to do here is if you're using VB, I would go in here and go ahead and change option strict to on. Uh, the option strict makes sure that all of your conversions are always widening conversions, so you can always convert an int up to a long, but you can't convert a long down to an int. Another one I like right here is in the source control. Now generally you don't end up changing the plugin very often. Uh, generally, it's set to Visual Studio Team Foundation Server, but now Microsoft has added in 2013 a Git provider, and it's possible that there's other plug-in providers here. Uh, you might, for example, still have to occasionally get into Visual Source Safe. I'm certainly hoping not, but that's certainly an option right here. Now, one of my favorites from a long time ago was under all languages, and what I did here is I would check all of them for line numbers. I would go ahead and check this and make sure all line numbers are turned on. Now, I don't have to do this in Visual Studio 2013 because the only one that's set for off initially is this one right here. Line numbers are turned off, and so when we go into all languages, we see that most of them are checked. I mean, look at C Sharp, line numbers are on, HTML, line numbers are on. So we're pretty much set up on this particular one at this time. 
There's only two more options I want to talk about right now, and the first one is up on the screen. Now, this is probably something that you're not going to touch that often, but what this is is where you can add symbols to your debugging, and in particular, you can add the Microsoft symbol servers. Now, what this will do is it will allow you to actually debug into the .NET code. Now, around 2000, I believe it was 2005 or Visual Studio 2008 when they first released this, and using this feature, we actually found a bug in the .NET framework. Now, we were a fringe case, so it was kind of unusual, and when we went out and looked at it, it turned out that somebody else had already reported the bug, so it had already been done, but we did, in fact, find this bug, and because of that, we were able to find a hot patch to help fix things. So sometimes it is useful to go ahead and set up the Microsoft symbol servers. You also can take, if you have multiple groups in your organization, and set up your own symbol server. And essentially all you do is put the PDB files there for the different uh, assemblies that you're going to be using, the different DLLs. And when you click on an add, like right here I can add a new one, and when you have it clicked on, it will actually go out and check those symbols when you're debugging, and you can start debugging through your own code from, from other groups. I'm gonna go ahead and turn both these off because I don't need this on mine. The second area that is also not heavily used is the package manager, and this is essentially NuGet. And you'll see that there's two package sources to start with. There's the NuGet, which is where the majority of things are stored, and then Microsoft actually has one to feed some of their .NET stuff, and, and you can find updates for Visual Studio here. You can also end up adding your own here, and what you'll do is actually add a URL where the PDBs can be found, and go ahead and name it for your organization. I'm going to go ahead and delete this because I don't need this particular one either. Now that's the end of our whirlwind tour of options in Visual Studio 2013. Now most of these settings are available in most versions of Visual Studio. Of course the debugging options, the NuGet uh, package manager are all newer, probably 2005, 2008. The uh, themes are only available in 2012 and 2013, but line numbers have been around forever. And in fact, in general, they're turned off. The same thing with the option settings in Visual Basic. I, I hope you enjoyed this one. And if you have, you can keep up on my blogs by watching it here on this channel, going to the written version, which is on my blog at gregorybeamer.wordpress.com. The actual link will appear down in the text below this video. And then on Twitter, at GB World, every time I post a new blog entry, either written or this type of video blog, I keep it up on there. So, peace and grace, and I'll see you next time.